Hi, Craft Patty here. This is one of my Dirty Pork paintings that I had made, and you can see it on my YouTube channel. And I was thinking it's very beautiful, but I just needed it to do a little bit more. So this is what I came up with. How about a Dirty Pork painting that forms a landscape as well? So in this particular painting, I did use Floetrol. I used alcohol to make some cells, and I controlled how I put on the paint. So stay tuned, have a watch. You'll find out in the description below all the supplies and where to buy them and how to do a landscape controlled dirty pour. Well, here I am working on my living room floor because I don't have a table that's big enough to support three larger canvases. So I have put poly on my floor, nice thick poly, and I've covered it with freezer paper. The freezer paper is going to be used so I can catch all the runoff and the drips coming off the painting so it can form acrylic skins, which can make another beautiful painting in the future. So stay tuned for another video coming up. But for today, I'm going to paint on three canvases, and they are 12 inches by 36 inches. I'm going to take my plastic cup. I'm going to just judge where the middle of the cup is. Just poke a little bit of a hole, just so I've got a guide. Then I can come back in Find my little hole just by poking and you'll eventually get back into that same hole. Just about there, there we go. And now I'm gonna come in to the little join here, just ahead of the staples. And I'm gonna push my pin into that area and just get it started. And because it's hard on my hands, I'm just taking the end of my hammer here just to give it some strength so I can push that cup into the wood. And now I've got a nice sturdy leg for my painting. I'm going to continue to do my other three corners. So here's my setup ready for painting. It gives me some room for the paint to drip down the sides because I want my sides covered in paint. And when I go to lift up my canvases or tilt one way or the other, I am not going to have to be worrying that they're going to fall off my base. I will be using the Flood Floetrol and as you see right on the bottle it says improves flow and leveling. This is why this is a great product to use as your base for your paints. But I'm also going to try adding some PVA glue and the 91% alcohol for assisting in making some cells. I have used the silicon lube to help create cells, but in this particular project, I'm not going to. The only thing I'm using the silicon lube for is to actually spray inside my plastic cups. And then I'm just taking a paper towel just to go around the sides and this basically just aids in the cleanup of your cups. The main paints that I'll be working with today is a product from Opus. It's a local craft store in my area. And again, it's a fluid acrylic. I also have some golden fluid acrylics. And because I don't have a supply of the colors I need, I just picked up some two paints in Liquitex. And because I tend to use a lot of white in the flow paintings, I'm using Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in white. For my white, I'm gonna just be mixing equal portions of flow trail with my Artist Loft Fluid Acrylic. So about, I'm gonna go I'm going to be using quite a bit of white probably, so I'm going to 
make a pretty big cup of the white. Give my other paint a good shake. And that's on the thick side. It's not, it doesn't have like a continuous run. As you can see, it stops. So I'm gonna add a bit of water. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, so now for my sandy bottom of my painting, I'm going to mix up some Artist Loft unbleached titanium. I'm gonna make up some Liquitex raw sienna, add some Floetrol to the bottom of my cups here. So in these ones, because this is a lot thicker paint than the um, fluids, I'm just going to have to go by trial and error here. I'm just going to add the paint. And I'm going to just see what I've got. I'm sorry, but I can't give you an exact on this one. For me, really, I'm looking more for the color rather than how much physical paint I'm putting in there. So we'll need some water to thin that one down. Some raw sienna to this one. And I'm thinking that's a little bit too dark for a beach, so I'm gonna add some white. So my beach colors are all done. I've got a little bit of a lighter sandy color, a little bit of a pinky color, and we've got our gray. Ready for mixing up some um, beautiful ocean colors. So I'm gonna start with, this is Floetrol that I just strained. So we'll start with approximately half a cup. Just because I like to experiment and I like to have fun, I'm going to add in some of the glue I just want to see whether this gives a little bit different texture or fluid feeling to the water. Who knows? We're experimenting. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Thalo Turquoise from Opus. So let's start here. And with these fluid acrylics, this paint is very concentrated. So you'll see that compared to the two paint, you won't need a lot of paint. You can see how dark that is. We're going to add just a little bit of water to that. Won't put in quite so much this time. Like I said, it's very concentrated. I have some golden fluid green gold. Tone it down with just a little bit of white. Phthalo green, again, it is a fluid acrylic. Phthalo green. I'm going to just do a couple drops to see what we get on that one. And now we've got more like a, a foam green. All right, that's our ocean colors. Lighten that up with some white. And along with the sky, I will be using my white that I've already mixed up. So these sky colors are done. That's what I've got for my mountain colors.
and I've decided to mix up a, just a little bit of black. This is the Opus Lamp Black. It's also a fluid acrylic. And this will aid in if I want to make anything just that little tiny bit darker, or a little bit more contrast, and especially probably for the, the mountain range. Okay, now we're ready to make our dirty pour. I'm using this large cup because I want it to have the pouring spout on it so I can have good control. I have sprayed the inside of this cup with my silicone lube and wiped it out with a paper towel so it flows out easily. I have put in my 91% alcohol in a spray bottle as I'm going to be spraying the alcohol in between my layers of color. Let's have some fun because I want my painting to flow through and make it look like it's all in painting I'm just going to come start on my side here and I'm just going to bring it right through I'm just going to help it along by tilting it a little bit. And I've just got a little palette knife here, so I'm just going to fill in the areas here, just help it along. And now because I want my sides done, I'm just going to grab some of this that's fallen down and let it drip down the sides. I just wanted to show you, this is what we've got so far for our sandy bottom. And it's got some lots of neat interest and I love how the colors are all blending together. Here's our second panel. And our third panel. Now I'm in with the watercolor, I'm going to bump up right against my beige here. Now 
And I'm going to come in with my white. I just want a division between the water and the sand. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of white. And I'm going to come in with a straw and I'm just going to blow this white all I can here into the blue. And again, I'll just come in and scoop up some of the drippings on the paper and let it drip down the sides. And we can do some tilting if you prefer. See where it goes. Just enough to get it to move down the sides a bit more. with the watercolors coming into the sand and the white making it look like the crest of the little beach waves into the second panel and the third panel. So I'm going to be putting in some reddish brownie mountains or let it resemble mountains because this is an abstract remember it's not exactly how one would see it but it gives you the illusion that it is a landscape so the being that the foreground is darker i'm going to start with my darker colors so i'll put in some of my red oxide again i'm using my alcohol spray and i'll put in some of my raw sienna and a titch of the black. All right. I'm going to pour that on first because that would be my darker portion. my spatula and just fill this in a bit because I don't want to disturb this too much by moving it a lot so I'm going to just use my tools 
to help it out. Okay, that was our first row of mountains. So now I'm going to just keep the same container and I'll come in just with a little bit more of this. Just a titch of black. about Sienna. And a lot more of the later color this time. And some of our white. And then with my stick, I'm going to just drag it through just a few times to mix those colors up. For our last part of our mountains, I'll finish up and just use up the rest of the red oxide because I don't want to waste it. Here's my alcohol, and I'm going to come in with my lightest color. Another spray. I'm gonna come in with my white. Get rid of my polluted part. And I'm gonna mix this up a bit because I want this lighter than that last one that we poured. I'm just going to come in and check my sides, use my runoff, and fill up my sides. So I wasn't happy with the shades of blue I had, so I've just come in and I've mixed up a few more colors. I'm going to reject this one that looks like it's got a little bit of more of a purple hue to it. When I put it up against the blue, it looks really, really purple. So I'm going to go with what I've got here, and I think I've got enough now. I've got lots of white. Mixed up a little bit of one that's got a little bit of black in it to make it look a little bit more gray and a different degrees of different blues. 
So now we're ready to do our sky. I'm going to come in with a bit of white first just to have some little bit of filler in here. And again, I've sprayed the inside of my measuring cup with silicone just so it pours out nicely. And I'm just going to start pouring it on in here. I'm just going to tilt it a bit to help the skyline. I don't want the other parts to be moving too much, but they've been sitting a little longer, so that helps me. Now I'll just come in with my spatula and just finish up my edges. So it's still very wet and it's still moving and still more cells are forming and I'll just zoom up and I'll show you the rest here just on one panel sorry about the light reflection there and up to the sky here's a closer view of the sky on one panel And down into the mountain range and into the water and down into the sand. Remember in the beginning of the video I was telling you about all the acrylic skins that would form from all the leftover paint and the drippings. 
So this is what I've got left. So I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm just using my kitchen spatula. I'm just going to get this started and lift up underneath. And then I'll come in and I can peel this whole marvelous skin off. And look at this acrylic skin with all these beautiful patterns in it. Why waste that? So I'm going to hold on to these and Crafty Patty, as you know, you never know what she's up to next. And we'll see what we can create on another video. Well, I'm pretty excited and I'm really happy on how this turned out. I had in my head what I wanted to do, but you never know what a dirty pour will do and how it will react in different ways. So by controlling the paint and put it where I want to put it, I got this wonderful landscape. I hope you like it. Stay tuned for many more great videos.